Lively Rotorua is the epicentre for viewing New Zealand's volcanic landscapes of seething, steaming geysers and mud pools. The low-slung town is full of geothermal activity. You'll notice the smell as soon as you arrive, which has created a moonscape of wildly coloured silica terraces and bubbling ponds on Rotorua's doorstep. In this video, we're going to be looking at the top 10 things to see and do in Rotorua. And just wait till you see the number one that we're going to be showing in this video, something you would never even have thought of, so make sure you watch till the end. Before we begin though, you can help support our channel by becoming a member of this channel by pressing that join button below. This will help us to bring you more awesome travel videos. Go on. So now let's cut to the chase. At number 10, Kaituna River Whitewater Rafting. One of the most popular adventures in Rotorua, Kaituna River White Water Rafting is a must-do when visiting this area of outstanding natural beauty. Fast and furious rapids are the order of the day, and during your three-hour whitewater trip, you'll be left breathless, not just by the pace of the action, but also the jaw-dropping scenery of the canyons and rainforest you pass through. A highlight is the plummet over Tutia Falls, a near vertical drop into the pool below. Yes, you will get wet. Cliff diving is also included for those up to it. While no experience is necessary, these tours are led by professionals, some age restrictions apply. Equipment such as wetsuits, helmets, floating devices and boots are included with your tour package. Hotel pickup and drop-off is also included. Next up at 9, Hobbiton. Fans of the Lord of the Rings trilogy and Hobbit films will want to make a beeline to the small town of Matamata for a pilgrimage to the film set of Hobbiton. The entire village created for the movies directed by Peter Jackson is set on the private Alexander farm. It has been faithfully preserved by the owners, who now guide tours to the site for movie buffs seeking to revel in a slice of Middle Earth. With the troglodyte houses of the Shire sitting snuggled into the hillside and the mill and inn standing amid rolling lush green countryside, it truly feels as if you stepped into Tolkien's fantasy world. Regular themed events and festivals are also held here. Check the website for details. At 8, Waitomo Glowworm Caves. The Waitomo Glowworm Caves are one of New Zealand's most popular sites, and for good reason. This deep limestone cave system, littered with huge stalactites, is home to hundreds of thousands of glowworms, and the impressive Latin name is Arachnocampa luminosa, who illuminate the rock ceilings and walls in a spectacular display of twinkling, tiny spotlights. Boat tours every half hour head 250 metres into the subterranean passages of these cathedral-like caverns to witness the phenomenon. As well as the main caves, the Waltomo area has several surrounding caves for more underground adventures. Both Raakui Cave and Aranui Cave can be accessed on foot and allow you to observe the weird limestone formations and stalactites and stalagmites up close, while Ruakuri Cave is also the setting for blackwater rafting tours deep into the caverns. Next up at number 7, Hell's Gate Geothermal Park. Set amid 50 acres of steaming, boiling geothermal activity and boasting the Southern Hemisphere's hottest waterfall and some of the most active and violently bubbling hot mud you'll ever see, Hell's Gate Geothermal Park certainly lives up to its name. I did wonder. The Kakahi Falls were once used for bathing by Maori warriors, with the plummeting water cascading over the rocks at a steady 40 degrees Celsius. Yes, 40! while the aptly named Inferno area is a steamy vision of pools and bubbling mud that heats up to 100 degrees Celsius. Little hot for me. A little less hot and much less violent are the neighbouring Hell's Gate Spa facilities, where you can chill out in geothermal mud baths and sulphurous hot springs. At 6, Tipuya. Home to Rotorua's Pahutu Giza, Tipuya has plenty of geothermal marvels to explore. Located on the outskirts of the town centre, Pahutu Giza is the southern hemisphere's largest Giza and sprays water up to 30 metres in the air in eruptions that can last for days on end. One eruption lasted for 250 days. However, these days, eruptions are more likely to last a few minutes. Nearby is another active geyser, Titohu, which also has regular, although smaller, eruptions. 
As well as all the geyser action, there are steaming alkaline springs in the area, which the Maori use for cooking, and bubbling mud pools. When the geothermal sightseeing has finished, the Tipoya Park has a kiwi house, where you can see New Zealand's rare and nocturnal national bird up close. It's also home to the New Zealand Maori Arts and Crafts Institute, where you can watch masters and students working on traditional wood and bone carvings and learn about the preservation of Maori art history. Next up at number 5, Wakariwa Ariwa, a Maori village. Amid the steam vents and hot pools of Wakariwariwa geothermal area of Rotorua is the Maori village of Wakariwariwa. Here, the Toroangi Nyagati Waihao tribes welcome visitors to experience the culture and heritage of the Maori people. Hourly guided tours of the village include a performance of the haka and other traditional Maori songs by the Tipakira cultural group and a look at how the local residents use geothermal energy for cooking and heating. Those wanting to delve deeper into the rich culture of the New Zealand's indigenous people can stay overnight in the village marae or meeting house. Want to stay a little longer? The facility also boasts a campsite. Next at number 4, Waio Tapu. More geothermal oddities await at Waio Tapu, home of the Lady Knox geyser, which erupts at 10.15 every morning with water shooting up to 20 metres in the air. This colourful area brims with volcanic activity, with bubbling mud pools formed by a collapsed mud volcano, water pools tinted fluorescent green and steaming terraces in shades of bright yellow and lurid orange, all creating a surreal and otherworldly landscape. A series of walkways through the Waio Tapu Park allows you to traverse the area for good views of the volcanic sites. Be sure to spend a little time in the visitor centre. In addition to its detailed information regarding the attraction, there's also a shop and cafe on site. A great way to ensure you get to see the very best of the attraction is via a Rotorua Eco Thermal Small Group Tour. These fun morning excursions are led by professional guides and include the highlights of the hot springs and geothermal formations, including the Lady Knox geyser. At 3, Tiwairoa. Established in 1852 by a Christian missionary, Tiwairoa was envisioned as a model Maori village, which could also cater to the many foreign visitors arriving to see the famed pink and white terraces nearby. The village, though, was to have a short history. On June 10, 1886, Mount Tarawira erupted followed by the Lake Rotomahana exploding, covering Tiwairoa with a layer of mud up to two metres thick. Although most villagers were able to escape, 17 lives were lost. Archaeological excavations here began in the 1930s and the site now reveals the floor plans of the original buildings. The on-site museum displays items recovered from the site during the excavations and also contains a detailed geological exhibit of the pink and white terraces which now lie under Lake Rotomahana. A pretty walking trail leads from the archaeological site through native bush to Wairiri Falls. At 2, Rotorua Museum. Amid the tranquil government gardens, which lie on the shores of Lake Rotorua, is the ornate Tudor-style old bath house building that now contains the Rotorua Museum. Inside, a series of permanent exhibitions tell the story of Rotorua's cultural history from its pre-European era to the present. The well-collated Nga Pumanawa Etu Arawa Gallery focuses on the history of the Te Arawa Maori tribe, while the rooftop terrace, with stunning panoramas across the lake and basement of the museum, provide a look at the building's 1908 origins, when it was a famed spa resort. Fascinating ethnology exhibits span the people of the Pacific, and other galleries spotlight the social history of Rotorua and the natural surroundings. And finally, at number one, Waimangu Volcanic Valley. Rotorua is the heart of New Zealand's geothermal attractions, and Waimangu Volcanic Valley is one of the most popular places to see the seething mud and steaming silica terraces. A series of walkways allow visitors to view the smoke-filled craters and bizarre acid yellow and lime green terraces safely. The Inferno Crater is a highlight, with its huge geyser bellowing into action. The trail meanders all the way to the shore of Lake Rotomahana, where boat trips are offered to view more geothermal features. 
For history fans, the 45-minute boat loop is a must-do as the cruise takes you across the site of the famed pink and white terraces, once called the eighth wonder of the world and similar to the travertines of Pamukkale in Turkey, which were destroyed when Mount Tarawera erupted in 1886. And there you have the top 10 things to see and do in Rotorua. Did you like what you saw? Let us know in the comments down below. Share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fantastic travel guides. See you next time.